Roger Palmer from what's on Disney Plus dot com. Hi, Roger. Hi there, Gregory. Thank you very much for taking your time out and um, to speak to me today. Uh, my um, pleasure. Thank, thank you, you for the much. thank. Thank you for the interest in our craft. Yeah. Yes, yeah. It's, I'm, I'm just. It's like really interesting to kind of get in and kind of see, you know, a little bit more about how you kind of you made um, Moon Knight. So that's the, the thing is. So could you explain what your role is in terms of making Marvel's Moon Knight? So uh, I'm a director of photography or cinematographer. If you see that credit on a film or TV, that's that's my position. And uh, the essential job from a there's sort of two parts. There's an artistic part, which is part of helping to visually interpret the story with the director to determine the photography, like the style, how you use the camera, colors, things like that, working with the uh, the designer and, and all that type of thing, like filmmaking technique. Uh, and also from a practical standpoint, you run the, the sort of shooting crew that is doing the lighting and the gripping and the camera, which is a big part of actually what you do when you do every day when you shoot. Yeah, that's, it's just, uh, like I said, so interesting, especially like um, one of the things with Moon Knight, with there being so many different locations and stuff, how did like the different locations impact on what you did um, filming each episode? Uh, well, that's a, a great question because uh, like television or sort of like one hour drama like this is has changed a lot in the last few years. I worked on Game of Thrones a few years ago and those like one hour scripts like ours, it's like a whole movie. Like we don't you know, we're not a police station and then like two witness houses and one more place like a conventional TV show. We're, you know, in the desert, then we're in like inside a, you know, pyramid or we're, you know, in a backyard with giant gold pyramids and we're, you know, fighting in a horse arena. So it, the amount of prep required for each episode is about similar to a feature film. So we sort of approach it in the same way, which is basically trying to break it up into what will be a set, what will be a location, how we will marry them, how we can fit, fit that into the schedule. Because a lot of it turns into like how you can like fit all this, you know, all this material into the days. Like we can't, you know, we can't go to Jordan and come back. We're gonna do all the stuff in Jordan, you know, the desert at, at one time, or we'll build one set and try and do everything for the episode in that one set, you know, at one time. And a lot of it is sort of like a, a breakdown that way, but visually it's also like figuring out how to make the journey interesting for the audience and interpret the script in a way which will, you know, make it an enriching and amazing experience. And I gotta say, so what was your sort of biggest challenge of working on Moon Knight? Oh boy. Uh, I think it was like a sea of challenges. <laughs> it's like similar. I'd like at some point I felt like I was Stephen Grant when I was, you know, starting the show because you would le read the script and like, we're doing what and where and how, and there's so many things. Uh, and also such a complex story because, um, like something that Muhammad said, we'll probably touch on this later, but which is, you know, in the first episode, it's a bit like a horror movie. Like there's different genres in each episode. So we might adapt the style we're using for each episode because of that. Uh, I think the biggest challenge was, figure out how to adapt all those scripts in, in an interesting way style wise and still you know be able to actually produce the show which is like a six hour movie and uh the time of a two hour movie yeah and so was uh did the how much of the pandemic what sort of impact did that have on the whole uh, process of making it uh well here's like a typical example so i think on day three uh you know kevin feige came to visit us which is very nice he came to you know see us off and we we're shooting steven's apartment which is the the department which yeah. we start the show in and you know typically like i have glasses so uh and the current rules at the time were i had to wear uh eye coverings when i was near the actors so we managed to get a pair of goggles with prescriptions for me so i had goggles and a mask and a hat and a radio another radio this air and that's how i met kevin who also had a shield and everything else and so like oh nice to meet you your face is a great job let's and that's sort of it uh and that you know the big thing about COVID is keeping us separate as we work because a film crew is we're kind of all over each other we kind of work closely together so it's how to communicate at a distance a lot of like remote communication like radios things like that and not all be in the same place at the same time that's like the biggest difference and we did work out quite well and also we we're shooting in budapest where a lot of the crew speaks hungarian I do not speak Hungarian and you know so there's like the translation and stuff so it was a lot of those type of issues. And was there any like thought at one point to use maybe like like the volume like they use with the Mandalorian or was it always going to be um, on location? Uh, well I think you know there was one big push from our, you know Muhammad our director and in, in general to try and do as much real as possible because he's as a director most comfortable with shooting in a real location that's his, his all his films are done that way. And so that's one thing to listen to. The second thing, uh, just from a procedural standpoint, the the volume type shooting, you have to have all your backgrounds completely as you would want them in the final thing when you shoot. And with the way we were working, we would not be able to ever have all that like completely ready. So it was really not really an option for us in that in that way. 
Oh, I was going to say, um, you said like Budapest and Jordan. Um, which kind of place was the place you liked? And obviously London, because it, we, there was some great stuff filmed as well uh, in the um, the British Museum. And which was your favourite kind of place to film in? Well, that's tough. That's like picking a child. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, first of all, I have to you know, give an amazing uh, acknowledgement to Stefania Sella, our amazing production designer, because we had incredible sets to work in. Uh, like the museum was done in an art gallery in Budapest uh, and you know, all the things you see were made by them. We had like an incredible array of amazing sets. Uh, I can only discuss up to episode four, but you yeah. know, there's still more sets to come. And each one was like an incredible gift and incredible also challenge to figure out how to, to do it correct for the story, like how to light it and how to use it properly. So I, I wish I could, am I dodging your question? I don't have one. <laughs> Especially as well, obviously, like with the pandemic and like traveling and stuff, it must have made it so much more harder just kind of getting around everywhere. Oh, yes, absolutely. It was like, yeah. you know, we're a big group of people and scouting is like 130 people in buses and we have to stay apart. And, you know, it was definitely uh, a challenge. And I got to ask as well, like from the point of view now that you've got like some episodes out, how does it feel like looking at people's reactions and, and fans and stuff now? And, you know, you know, obviously what's happening up in the future episodes and that whole feeling of just like watching us all react to it. It's, um, you know, when you like I came out of kind of an art house cinema and like feature films is like a, my background. And one of the most rewarding things is seeing a, something with an audience and the the, you know, the equivalent here in like this sort of, you know, you know, cable or whatever you want to call it, Disney plus streaming drama is like seeing people's reactions because there's a big audience for this project. There's a big fan base for the character. And I really do enjoy seeing people's like the, the theories and enjoyment. And it also it educates you as a filmmaker of what things translated, what little clues you leave, what things people react to. And that's what the, you know, that's one of the best parts about this process. And I'm just very grateful that I could work on something that had such a, a great audience that was so eager for it. So it's tremendously fun to watch that stuff. Yeah, and it's kind of funny because it's like for me, um, being able to watch the first four episodes and then like watching people's reaction to it, it's like the first time I've really kind of been able to see that from like, the Marvel point of view. And it was, it's you know, I mean, I'm waiting to see what happens after like episode four, like everybody, and it was just like like waiting for weeks and stuff. So I definitely felt that even just from that point of just seeing it a little bit earlier than everybody else, let alone like how you guys. Oh feeling. yeah. And I think our I think our show is unique too in terms of the script. I think with uh, the work with both our directors Mohammed and Justin and Aaron and and Jeremy who crafted the kind of idea of like introducing the character through Stephen first and you know bringing it into an unconventional way was really smart because it made for a very like propulsive story. Like every episode is like a lot, a lot happens a lot. It's a it's a journey and you kind of go in the point of view of the character, which is I think a very like engaging way to tell a story. And sort of obviously is where we're going to get the um, upcoming episode of Assembled, where we get to see like the behind the scenes look and stuff. How do you feel like from that point of view, like we have, where we all get to learn a little bit more about it? Uh, well, for me, it's exciting. I mean, look, one, I'm grateful we're talking because, you know, I'm a cinematographer, not a director, not an actor. And it's, you know, to il illuminate the, like the amount of craft that goes into everything you see in front of a, the camera, like just the sets, you know, the actors what they're where, uh, the choice of the camera, like, you know, how we light a scene, how we shoot a scene, you know, ideally there's a lot of thought we put into this stuff. And it's, it's really, it's, it's, it's gratifying to see some interest in that. And for people to understand like, oh yeah, like everything that you see is a choice. Usually it has to be either manufactured or made or put in front of the camera. And I, like, I'm just really grateful that there's interest. And I'm really happy that like Marvel takes an interest in that to put those out. You know, it's, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for, I always find the assembled episodes and the, like the Disney gallery ones. It's always great to kind of see that behind the scenes things. Was there any like new techniques that you like were able to try out on Moon Knight that you've not been able to do before? Uh, well, what's interesting was uh, there is a lot of like, there is, we, especially with Muhammad's episodes, he did like to like kind of like connect things within a shot, like make the shots run longer and like the action progress. And that's something that I've done more recently on the, the, the Watchmen series. And that was something that he really wanted also to make it, more the experience of the character like not using an edit to tell a story but like to travel with the character and that creates a lot of interesting challenges because you're you see more you have to you know hide your lights or the backgrounds or you have to have more extras or you have to figure things out and that was probably one of the biggest challenges for this and you know doing that and then as we see later in episode four you've got oscar playing two characters and now we have to do a scene twice and he has to you know he has to intelligently figure out how he wants to play it figure out how we'll do all that in one shot and then act with someone else and then like it, it the, the layers of things just compound to make each 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 scene and each thing a big challenge 
And obviously from like, we'll go on the, like the first four episodes. What was kind of like your highlight, your best scene that you kind of put together? Oh, I dread this. I, I dread this moment. <laughs> I dread this moment. Um, I think, uh, oh, wow, I don't know. It's really, it's, it's really hard to pick one. Um, there's one that I really love, which is when, in the first episode, when Steve is in the elevator and it's like a full horror movie and he opens the elevator and it's like the entire hallway is black and it's like nothing. It's a little void. Yeah. Like that alone, like that one image, like I think tells a lot about where he's at and also, you know, the unknown of what the story is going to bring up. And then we see a little flash of Conchu. And that's, I think that was one of the first moments where we should that in the first week where I think we kind of hit the nail on the head and was, okay, so we're on the right track with how we're, you know, tell, bringing the audience into this. And I think that was one of the highlights. Yeah, and so I've pretty much got to ask at this point, um, excluding Moonlight, what has been like your favorite um, sort of Disney Plus original so far? Oh, uh, shifting oh gears a bit. <laughs> I didn't prepare for this question. Uh, <laughs> let's see. I mean, what, I mean, for me, I mean, the reason that like this story excites me is because it's you know it's about a character. It's about you know the Stephen and Mark that are reconciling with this one person, and it's about. And I, like for me, the char- stories that come out of a character are the most interesting. And there's elements of that in all the stories. I think WandaVision had a lot of that. There's there's some beautiful moments in like even Winter Soldier between uh, between Falcon and the the previous, you know, the older yeah. Winter Soldier he meets. And because you know, storytelling is really about understanding people. And anything that el- illuminates that more is what I gravitate to the most. And this story, despite its fantastical elements is all about that like it's all about exploring this character and you know what he's about i just want to say thank you so much for taking your time out to speak to me today about um moonlight i can't wait for these last two episodes to see how all this comes together and what happens next and you know it and it is that thing of this film ha- oh, so it, again the series feels like a film um I mean, I was lucky enough to see it on the big screen at the London and sort of being there with the crowd. And it did feel like a movie. And I, you know, I've got to say, you know, it's a, it's a fantastic series. And, you know, thank you so much for um, making it. Oh, thank you very much. I was like, that was one of the goals. And I'm glad you had that experience because we were, we were desperate to try and create that. So thank you so much. Yes. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you very much for watching this video. Make sure you go check us out over at whatsondisneyplus.com. Like, follow, and subscribe. Also, a huge thank you to all of our supporters over on Patreon and also on our YouTube channel memberships. And I'll just see you guys in another video. Laters.